one thing I ask, one thing I seek, is to live in a house of the Lord. Every breath, every word, every thought, every moment, every minute, every day. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, 1,440 minutes. All for God's glory. Bro, you trying to be an overcomer? You should come to the gym more often. You know, everyone starts somewhere. Or maybe I should start listening to this new series by Pastor Era in 1440 talking about how to overcome. Yeah, you don't want to miss it. What is up, 1440? It's Pastor Era, and we are here starting a brand new series titled Overcome. So here we are, we're hanging out in the gym at KCM, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and you're probably wondering why in the world are you guys here? Well, listen, if we're gonna be overcomers, you gotta work out, you gotta get strong, you gotta get, get your body and your mind right. So we thought this was the perfect location to talk about overcoming. So let's get into it. Um, over the next few weeks, um, the pastors and I, we're going to kind of go through some topics of things where we want to encourage you guys how to overcome, like some specific situations that you're dealing with in your life that we want you to overcome. But first things first, we need to set the stage for what it means to be an overcomer. So here, let's do this. Let's go. The Webster's 1828 Dictionary. If you never looked at it, you should. It's really cool. Um, it's kind of one of the foundational dictionaries in the English language. And I looked up the word overcome. And so it says this. It says Someone who overcomes, it means to conquer. It means to be victorious over. It means to overflow. And it means to get the better of. So going through the scripture now, when I see the word overcome, I think conquer. When I see the word conquer, I think victory. When I see the word victory, I think overflow. So when we're talking about being an overcomer, we want you to be someone who conquers. We want you to be someone who's victorious. We want you to be someone who overflows with the things of God. And of course, to get the better of, we know who we want to get the better of. We know what we want to get the better of. So it's pretty awesome. So let's let's dive into it. Um, I'm going to read this scripture, and it's pretty awesome. First uh, Corinthians 15, 55, 57. It says, "O oh death, where is your victory? O oh death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ." the victory. So if we were to read that scripture again in a different translation or with a different mindset based on our definition, we would say, but thanks be to God who gives us the ability to overcome through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus himself is the ultimate, ultimate overcomer. He's the ultimate conqueror. He's the ultimate victor. So with everything we're doing and with everything we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks, we have to remember that the foundation of it all is that Jesus has already overcome. And because he's overcome, we can overcome. What did Jesus overcome? Number one thing was sin and death. He overcame sin, he overcame death. So when we look at our lives and we look at the things that we're facing, if it falls into the category of sin or death, we will overcome it. We will have victory, victory over it. So here's, let's go to another scripture. This is one of, if you're, if you're part of the Word of Faith like team, if you're part of our crew, you've heard these scriptures before. So 1 John 5 says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know uh, that love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. It's really important. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. They're not at all. Um, they're actually pretty light and easy. Uh, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Except the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. So here's the deal. How do you become an overcomer? Based on this scripture, by your faith, and your faith is believing that Jesus is the Son of God. So here, we just set this, set this foundation up. Listen, if you want to be victorious, if you want to overcome, you want to conquer, you go to Jesus because he's the ultimate one who has overcame and who conquers. 
So if we believe in him, we automatically gain access to the ability to overcome. So let's, let's go through this a little bit more. He talks about overcoming the world. Uh, what does that mean? So if we go to Romans 12, Romans 12, 21, very simple. It talks about a bunch of things before there, but it says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So we're going to kind of, we're setting the foundation here. So if Jesus overcame sin and death, and then he tells us to overcome the world, we know that in the world there is sin and death. So we're overcoming those things. And then this scripture says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So for overcoming the world, and the world is filled with sin and death, we know that sin and death is evil. So again, Jesus is telling us we can overcome it through him. Let's take it a step further. Let's go into to John. Um, let's go to the very beginning. Um, like John's relationship with Jesus was so amazing. Um, I know Pastor John talks about it, and I know Pastor Greg talk about it all the time. Like John, when he wrote his, his gospel, he didn't do what the, the other people who wrote the other three gospels did. He didn't start off with this genealogy. He started off with talking about who Jesus was. And it said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So again, we're setting our foundation. Jesus came, and we see right here, like Jesus was the word. That's who John was talking about. He was talking about Jesus being the word, and that if we put it all together, Jesus came, he overcame sin and death. Jesus came, he overcame the world. What's in the world? Oh, we talk about evils in the world. Over, uh, we overcome that with good. Okay, what else are we talking about overcoming? Oh, darkness, because God is light. And light can never be overcome by darkness, but darkness can be overcome by light. So when we're talking about overcoming, we're overcoming by Jesus, we're overcoming by good, and we're overcoming by light. And so those are those, that's an amazing thing. So inside of you, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that light lives inside of you. And that light is there to overcome darkness. And the darkness that we're overcoming is sin and death. Where is sin and death located? Sin and death is located here in the world. And it says in the scripture that we have overcome all of those things, all of those things. So remember, we're talking about being overcoming, going back to the definition. So we've conquered the world. We've conquered uh, sin and death. We've conquered darkness. All of those things are on, under our feet. And then if we take it a step further, like, okay, all right. So yeah, Jesus conquered all those things, but what about me? And it says here in 1 John 4, First uh, John 4, and it said, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. Okay, we know that already. If, you're, if you don't confess Jesus, you're not, you're not part of our team. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. So all of these people who focus on the 666 and all of these end time things, listen, the Antichrist was already here. The spirit that does not confess that Jesus is Lord is the spirit of Antichrist. Sidebar, but let's get back to it. And it says, little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Again, you have overcome the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit that doesn't acknowledge Jesus being Lord. So again, this, this is just an introduction. We're setting the foundation for Jesus being the ultimate overcomer. And because he's the ultimate overcomer, if he is in us, then that means the ultimate overcomer, the ultimate victor, the ultimate conqueror lives within us. And it gives us the power and access to overcome sin death, darkness, and the world. Listen, we love living here. We love the fact that God thought so highly of us that he created this, this world for us to live in. But you know what? Sin, sin has kind of done a number on it. But that doesn't mean that the sin can do a number on us. So here's the deal. If we allow Jesus to live in us, we have full access to the one who overcomes. And here's another benefit to overcoming. In Revelation 3, uh, let's say verse 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he with me. 
the one who conquers overcomes or has victory over, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. That is amazing. That's amazing to think that if we access our ability to have victory and overcome the world, sin, death, darkness, anything that's not of God, Jesus is saying, hey, you're going to come up here and you're going to sit on the throne with me. It says conquer, but we can replace the word. The one who overcomes, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. So how amazing is that, that he says, listen, trust me, I will overcome for you. I will overcome through you. And then because you've trusted in me and because you've overcome, you're going to come and hang out and sit on the throne with me. I think that is just one of the most amazing things um, that God does is he gives us a command to do something. And then he gives us the power to to do the thing that he commanded us. So he's commanding us, hey, overcome, overcome, overcome the world. Oh, but wait here, I'm going to give you the power to overcome through my son. So we, a lot of us, we love to, to quote the scripture where we overcome by the, the blood of the lamb and our testimony. The blood of Jesus Christ that covers you has given you overcoming power. Overcoming power. I know Pastor Holden is a huge Marvel fan. He loves superheroes like I do too. And we always talk about origin stories of superheroes. You know, someone get bit by a super spider or they get zapped with radiation or something like that. We have super overcoming, victorious, conquering powers, and we got them through the blood of Jesus. So you know what? You'd be like Bruce Banner, you know, with those gamma rays or Spider-Man swinging around and doing all the super things because of the, the access that they had to a radioactive spider or gamma rays or whatever it was. But we have access to the blood of Jesus Christ and we have access to the spirit of the Lord. And those things give us the ability to overcome. You don't have, you don't have to suffer. You don't have to, to sit back and, and, and take on all of the things. So we're going to talk about, you know, loss. There's a lot of death and, and loss that's happening right now. Um, we're going to talk about uncertainty and feeling alone. We're going to talk about opposition. We're going to talk about um, just other things that are affecting you in your lives. And we're going to give you specific scriptures and specific tools in order to overcome those things. But the first things first, listen, Jesus, trust Jesus, love Jesus, follow him, and you have access to overcome. So again, guys, just want to let you know, definition, like as we go through this, we're overcoming. Uh, remember, it's to conquer, to be victorious over, to overflow or to get the better of. And right now we wanna get the better of the devil. We're gonna get the better of the devil. We're gonna get the better of COVID-19. We're gonna get the better of depression. We're gonna get the better of all of these things that are currently affecting this world. We're gonna get the better of it because we are victorious. Through our faith, the blood of Jesus, and just the spirit of Jesus that, and the spirit that lives within us. So I hope you guys are encouraged. I hope you guys are, are setting your foundation and getting yourselves ready to, to be overcomers. So we love you guys. We love you guys. Uh, we want the best for you. So listen, check out the next few weeks. Check out the next few weeks and be encouraged. So as I end, you know, we're here hanging out in the gym. I think, you know, I might have to go over and do a couple reps, maybe hop on the bike or something like that and get myself, you know, nice and strong to, to step into my, my overcoming uh, state of mind. But before I do that, I'm going to say God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. So. Hey guys, what's up? Listen, I know y'all have been watching these uh, 1440 broadcasts. We're so excited that you've tuned in. But as you've watched, I know that there might be some of you guys out there that might not have taken the next step and received Jesus as the Lord of your life. Listen, everything the Bible has to offer is absolutely tremendous, but the Bible also says that Jesus is the door to everything God has for you in John chapter 10. So today, I wanna lead you through that door because Jesus is waiting with arms wide open to receive you. So if you're with me and if you have decided to make Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I know that you sent Jesus and that Jesus walked this earth 
and that he died on the cross. And Lord, I know that you raised him from the dead and that you set him on the right hand of God in heaven. Now, Father, I receive Jesus as the Lord of my life and say this, Jesus is Lord. Now, Father, take my life and do something with it. Amen. Listen, if you just prayed that, it's as simple as that. It doesn't take a lot of long time. All it takes is just a sincere heart and the confession of your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So listen, I want to be the first to tell you, welcome to the kingdom. We're happy that you're part of the family. Hey, this is Spotlight with our local 1440 students, um, where we get to just get to know people and their awesome talents. Uh, so right here, right now, this is, I'm not gonna do it, don't make me do it. <laughs> do I have to say my full name? Ola, nope, I'm gonna, <laughs> first name. Ola, Ola Ulu, Ulu Wapo. 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 <laughs> I'm doing so good. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, we're, they're about to or just heard your poetry piece, which is like beautiful. Um, so I guess what I just want to know is like, where does that come from? Like in you, what is that? How does that get stirred up inside of you to write those things down? I guess I see things like visions. Yeah. Like this one and like specifically, like me and my family were praying and that's when like after we were finished praying, we all went to sleep. But when I was praying, I saw three titles, like three titles of poems, and this was one of them. It was called Listen. So I stayed up to 3 a.m. writing those three poems, and that's even though I had school tomorrow. But like, <laughs> I was, I, that's basically how it happens. It just comes to me. I don't, that's really cool. So that's something like you feel like the Lord like kind of puts on your heart? Mm -hmm. That's really cool, wow. I'm honestly, I'm like wowed by it. You guys are hearing this and you're, it's just really cool. Um, so with your writing, are, are you doing like any competitions or anything with it? Do you do anything like that or is it just for you? No. You ever like really. performed or anything like that? No. No. I want to. Yeah. Like I want to put like a writing into a competition, but like I never did it. So like in the future, do you see yourself as like a public speaker? like a Martin Luther King Jr. or something. Mm -hmm. It yes. sounds like that. It sounds like really inspirational what you I what you written down. I don't like like talking a lot. So like I'd rather be like writing a book and like people can just read it if they want to. So more like a novel or something. Yeah. So like who inspires you? It's not really who. It's like books inspire me. Like I like the way they explain things and little imagery and I just like want to use that. I want to like write a book and it have imagery. What kind of books, like what books do you like specifically that are like, this is one that like inspires me that I'm just like floored by? I'm reading like three books right now. Like what at are you the same reading? time. There is one called uh, A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which was, it's like there's three books to it. I'm reading the second one, I'm on the second one. There's one called Selection, I just finished that one. There was five books. I don't like the last two. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm reading- Scratch those. <laughs> I'm reading Shatter Me. I think there's three books through it. I'm on the second one. So you like those ones? Do you feel like... My favorite I, Is it kind of like as you read, you're like, oh, I'm inspired to do this. So it's like every time you read a new book, mm -hmm. there's like a new thing that comes out of you. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Are there any like funny stories that you write? Not funny stories. No? But like... You never like have one? You're like, that sounds hilarious. What <laughs> am I writing about? <laughs> oh, okay. I was kindergarten, first grade. This is when I wanted to be a singer. I'm not good at singing, like, at all. <laughs> and, like, I would be writing songs. That's, like, when it all started. And I have this one song that I wrote, and, like, my, my siblings still bully me about it because it's so... It's good. It was, like, a Christian song. But, like... Don't bully her, <laughs> siblings. <It> was, Ola. <laughs> was the other one. <laughs> no, no, okay. It was, like, I love my God. He is good. He is the mightiest God I've ever seen. He is my God. He lets me lay down in his hand. And when I listen, he listens to me pray. And that's when, like, but I would be singing it. So it was horrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good. <laughs> is that how it sounded? 
<laughs> you give us a little piece of it, <laughs> a little mix in it. I'll be I'll be like the featured, and then you'll take the the full song. Yeah. You're the verses. I'll be the chorus. <laughs> That's the full song. <laughs> All right, well, this has been Spotlight. We're so glad that you joined us and came and shared your poetry. That was really awesome. So I hope you had fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Well, we'll see you guys soon. My brain is clouded and my mind is mush as they put a finger to their lips to say shush. I always thought I was a quiet person, never talked to anyone because I thought my anxiety would worsen. Is this why they never let me speak? Or is it they think that I'm weird, some sort of freak? I couldn't tell whether they were doing it on purpose, but every time they do it, these feelings resurface. I might not look like it, but I have something to say. But you never even give me the time of day. No matter what you think of me, these words are important because looking at you now, your life needs some reinforcement. Open your ears, look up, read my lips, and listen because I'll speak God's word with this voice that I'm given. Put your finger down, close your mouth, don't shush me. I guarantee that I'm free to be anyone who God wants you to see. I was given this job to gather souls for Christ, and if you could just listen, then I would find you nice. Because I'm not just a girl who will be quiet at all times, I'm not someone your mind just confines. Listen to his word, read between the lines, because he turns water into wines. Look at his miracles, look at his signs, because with him you won't die, you'll live lifetimes. Yo, that was fast. I know, I just got so much from that message. Yeah. Jesus is the ultimate overcomer, and he lives in you. So remember to live every minute of every day, all, all for, for God's, God's glory. glory.